Okay, let's start with Hegel. I can see how off is when I side by side. Oh, I see what you mean. I don't think it's that off. It kind of looks stylized. It's also like a lot of practice, you know? It's just a lot of practice. Just go back to keep doing the, the things that we did in the past few classes and you're just going to get there. An artistic flair. I can see that too. <laughs> Hold on, let me fix the camera a little bit more here. Okay. Okay. Let me write my notes. My notes. Um, I know some. I say somebody last week um, that I was going to give him some notes on the chat. I haven't forgotten about you. Um, I just got really busy, but I'll get back on it. I promise. I'll try to see if I can do it today after class. Okay, dokie. Let's go over your, so the assignment, even that today, even though we're trying to build over, I mean, build from past classes, you know, uh, that keeping your proportions, your scale and all that, it's just practice, keep doing that, keep that in mind. We're, what are we reviewing today for people that are just joining us today is we went over uh, the basics of lighting. Last week, or if it's your first time, or if it's your first time dropping in and joining us, Last week, we went over the basics of lighting. So we're going to do like a little quick recap before we go into critique from uh, last week's assignment. So um, last week, we went in on the basics of lighting, which here is like the, here is the basic, uh, a basic uh, ball or the values. And the basics of lighting will say is you have the half tone or what they call a medium or half tone. Usually it's about like a 50% gray or it's like what we, it's like the overall color. It's like usually like the, the main dominant color of the object or the lighting. And here it's called half tone. Sometimes they call it the mid, uh, medium or mid tone. Depends on um, your background. Then then you have the highlight and highlight can either be just you know the entire highlight area or here is calling it the spotlight they're calling it the spotlight uh, or hot light they're calling it highlight in general i like to call highlight the entire area that's on a highlight and like for me this entire area is the highlight and just that little super hot plot, uh, little hot spot is the hot light or spotlight. Uh, um, but here it has it, that little spot as the highlight. So different people call it different ways. So just get used to, just get, you'll get used to that or hear different terms. Then, um, then you have what they call the core or terminator. Again, different names or different schooling. And that you go from the half tone to the terminator. And after the, termi after, after the terminator, you have the bounce light or reflective light. Again, two different namings for it. Then uh, you have the cast shadow. That's the most basic shadow. And it doesn't talk about it here, but then you have the darkest part of the shadow with the touch the object. It's called contact shadow. But we're going to talk about shadows another day. That's a whole different monster. And I went over a little bit about how usually the importance of, I mean, usually when a lot of the information or the beauty uh, of, of illustrations or like the, the beauty of textures and richness or like where you can pack a lot of information, the things happening is right before where the half down turns into the core. That's where you can put, you can put pack information that you can see what things are, materials, textures, scratches. You can figure out if something is made out of metal, if it's made out of um, fabric or things like that. And we're going to get into materials later, um, how highlights work, and that will tell you what kind of material it is. So that's more advanced. But right now, just thinking, just think about like the core, the terminator, it's important that that's really going to help you um, make things 3D or like give you that 3D volume shape to it. 
And also keep in mind that usually the reflective light or the bounce light is usually never as bright as the half tone or the highlight. It's always lighter. Again, there's you can break the rules. There's exceptions, the exceptions for everything. But this is um, like in general, most of the times, that's something for you to keep in mind when you're making your illustrations. Um, is think about it's like is my reflected light or is my bounce light l um, less bright than the half tone and my highlight. And there is one more light that is not in this illustration, which is rim light, which is when you get that bright little edge one that's a light spotlight from behind. So keeping that in mind, we're gonna, uh, these are like the basics of lighting, and we're gonna go over the reviews uh, of last week's assignments. So let's start with Eagle. One thing that I do as a trick for checking values is that you just take whatever image you're working on and then I just turn it grayscale just so you can see it very clearly. And sometimes if you're trying, if the image is just um, tricky or there is a lot of extra information like fur or patterns or too many muscles or too many planes or things like that. I like to do this is I like to push in the blacks a lot. Um, sorry, I like to push. I keep forgetting I have to start putting things away from the camera so you guys can see. Um, I like to push in the blacks a lot in and then the lights in. That's a way to do it. Um, or just push the contrast. Just like pushing the contrast a lot. So you can like really see the exaggeration of the values just to help you see what's going on. Because here's like you can kind of figure out what's going on. But then here's like an exaggeration of like, oh, I see where the core is. I see where the highlights are. It's just like a little trick to to help me to really like confirm what I am seeing. Um, so let's say if I went to with it, so let's say I'm just going to push it a little bit so we can all see it easily while we're looking at this illustration. So, okay. So yeah, you got your, yeah, you got your mapping pretty right. You got your highlights. Yeah, you got your highlights pretty correctly where they are. And yeah, you got your shadow, you got your contact shadow. Yeah, you got your lights. And yes, that's correct. Your core is here. Um, you also have, you also have here and you don't see it, Hegel, but your entire core, um, is very fading. It's very faded. It's very, it's very light, but you also have a core all through here and yeah, here, you also have it here. You have it here, here, and you did catch this one. I can see you have that one there. Then... Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that you did, you were able you analyzed it pretty good. Yeah, you got your basic lighting down. Good job. I will say keep um keep uh practicing your keep practicing your um proportions. And I can see you are I can see you keep practicing your line work that we talked about, that you're getting more confident with your lines. I can see that that's happening. Keep doing that, good job. All right. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, I can see your, your lines are much more are more confident. I can see that. Let's see. Sorry, my camera is being weird. Okay. Then we are going to go with Mossy Rock. Mossy Rock. You pick this one. I really like, again, how... You're breaking everything down. <laughs> like you said, you're present. <laughs> I like, again, how you break everything into the meshes so you can see the mesh. Um, sorry, my hair hurts. So you can bring the, um, the mesh of this 3D-ness, the 3D-ness of it. I like that a lot. 
and I really like the uh, the blockiness of it. Like you just broke it down, very blocky that I can see very clearly the uh, the um, that you show me both versions. I like that that you show me the smooth it out and actually like the the mapping of it. I like that you did that. Very nice. And um, yeah, good job. Trying to think. I will say, yeah, I will say you nailed it. I will say, I'm just doing this quintin. At this point, you did a really good job. At this point, um, at this point, I'm just nitpicking because you nailed it. I mean, my I will say my favorite part is like you got this right here, right? This is a very weird plane change. And here, I think you did really good with that. Same here. Good job on that, and good job on getting the proportions. If at this point I'm just nitpicking, if anything, I will just try to at this point, since you already figured out the proportions down and you already got your values down, I'm just gonna be push you a little bit here and push you to move in the goalpost. I know this is not the assignment, but I'm gonna push you there because I know you can. At this point, I will just say get your get your values right. What I mean by that is um get your values right next to each other i think you can which is when you squint this guy is much darker this guy is more actually i want to yeah this guy is much darker this is darker this is darker this is darker more is more in shadow this is darker that's darker, a little bit darker here. This is darker. That's darker. I will say about that. I mean, I'm doing a crappy job, but I will say um, yours is a little bit more high key. I will say yours is a little bit more high key. If anything, especially this one, this little area, this little area around here. Again, I didn't say anybody, I didn't tell you guys to match the values to it. I'm just pushing you there because you're in the next level of it. Like you're, you're already figured this part out. So you're ready for the next step of the, the stuff, which is starting to match the values of it. So good job. Next we have Imagine Ecstasy. I don't know if it's here or not. Hi. I was gonna say, you got it pretty good too. You got the values down pretty well. Um, I like, like same thing, you got the terminators right, you got the bouncing light right. Yeah, you got the rendering, you got the rendering down pretty well too. Yeah, your highlights. You have your highlights, terminators. I really like how you did this right here. Very pretty. Good job. I really like how you treated this area. This is a tricky area. I was curious how you guys were going to do that, how the eye transitions back. I was curious how you guys were going to interpret that area. Uh, nice. If I were to nitpick you, because you did, you did a good job. If I were to nitpick at this point, I will say you have this lighter. I don't know if you can see, I don't know if you can see it here. This, this going on right here, this shape happening. Um, it's kind of missing on yours. I will just nitpick. What is it, Pan Pan? I'm, I'm speaking. I can't pay attention to you right now. Um, I will add that right there. And I will say, I don't know if you can see the reflected light from the wings is missing. Yeah. Yes. I was going to say, yes, you're missing this part here. And then the super dark part of the, of, of that, that goes in there. I was going to say you're missing those. Yeah. And the reflective light, a little bit more reflective light on the neck, but that's just in picking. They're a pretty good job. If I have any tips for you, I will say, Start work more on your um, proportions. Uh, try to get your proportions uh, down. Uh, 
with the scale and the proportions closer to the to to the uh, photo or like the source material, unless you're going for stylization, of course. But uh, good job. Yeah, yeah, this looks great. I really like how you you smooth you smooth the very you smooth the rendering very nicely, and I really like um, this rim light that you added right here. How you went beyond it right there that came out very pretty. That's a very pretty rim light. Good job. All right, Anna say, Jesus Christ, woman. So here we go. Let's just go directly to the knee picking because <laughs> this is gorgeous. I agree. This is beautiful. I was wondering if anybody was going to pick this one of the, uh, the ones that I submitted. Um, I'm glad you picked this one. This one was my favorite and the Sphinx. So that one scared you off. That's so funny. So let's see. At this point, this one, I will just have to go nitpicking. And yeah, you nailed this one at this point. Uh, let me see what it looks like tiny in comparison. I think because you nailed it so well, I think looking at a very tiny will be a... Oh, sorry. The picture went everywhere. Looking at a very tiny will really help me out to see where the, the values are correct or not. Or I mean, again, I know we're... Uh, but our, um, I know we're looking right now, reviewing, uh, putting down the... Um, um, understanding the basics of lighting and mapping it out, which you already did and you already have it. Obviously, you got that, you got that down pretty well. At this point, I think you're not, you're already next level. And I think for you, I will just start um, nitpicking and pointing down if you match the values, um, I will say. But this came out very nice. I think darker there. I like your, you, you nailed the proportions too. Good job. Yeah, awesome. And I really like the color option that you did. That came out beautiful and nice rim light. I really like how you did the rim light. That is not that shitty thing that people do. That's just like a white outline and that's it. I like how you went in from the, how you went in from the chest and follow the anatomy and went in and knew when to keep it bright and when to fade it softly. Oh, crap. And control the edges here. That was pretty. Also how you control the edges here, but lift it out here. Good job. Good job on the rim light. I think this came out really pretty. Trying to see your take on it, on this. It's really beautiful. I love this. Good job. And I really like too how you decided to put color on the Terminator. Mm, chef kiss. I love that. And how you chose to put um, the high saturation chroma right before the Terminator. Again, mwah, delicious. Love it. You did a really good job here. Yeah, good job. Yeah, this came out great. I just keep trying to find anything wrong with it, and I really don't. If anything, will be like nitpicking stuff like the anatomy here. It's just their folds are more wide. They have wider shoulders, like tigers have wider shoulders. Um, they just go a little bit more here than up. But again, it's just nitpicking stuff. This is great. Good job. Okay, let's go to Comcast. Eh? So you picked it well. One second. Okay, let's see, you picked it well. I like that you broke it down again like we did in the past classes. That you took it down to the basic shapes. You got your proportions down. Looks pretty good. I even see like a little bit of stylization on it and I really like it. I like what you did with the eye. And I like this. I love how you got down the little the little flip of the tail. Good job. That came out really pretty. So let's get down to the let's get down to the lighting. You know when I squint, I really like how you 
did it here, how you kept this darker on the thumbnail than here, that in the final one. I was just, I like how you pushed it there a little bit more, that in the final one. And you just, it just feels, it just, the, it just um, gets the information across more on the thumbnail than in the larger one. But uh, let's see. No, you nailed it. You got it down. You know, you got your highlights. You got your core. You got, you got terminators. You got the bounce. You got the contact. You got the cast. You got the terminator. Yeah, you nailed it. You get gold start. You got the proportions right. You got the scaling right. You got the lighting right. Yeah. I... I have nothing bad to say about it. No. Again, at this point, we'll be nitpicking. And uh, I think you did a good job. If I were to nitpick anything, I will say proportion-wise, again, once you're going for stylization, would be to um, uh, watch out more for your angles and don't lose your angles to the final. Don't, don't lose your sketches, initial angles. Like, so you know you had this angle right here. I, it feels like a little bit like you lost it here. It feels more skinny now instead of how you had it wider. Um, so like example, if this feels more, if you look at the photo, this feels more like, um, it's just, this feels like a little more, um, yours feels more like this, and this one feels more like that. I'm excited you're writing it, but if that makes any sense. So again, I'm just really nitpicking at this time, at this point. I feel like he's just more longer and he's just like a little more here. And when you look at the little fin going up, his eye is just closer to his eyes just a little closer to the fin than yours, but again, I'm really nitpicking at this at this point. You did a really good job. And your interpretation and understanding of this thumbnail came out very nice. And um, good job. And really good job doing the little um, the little tail flip. That came out really nicely. Also how you interpreted the eye. Good job doing the interpretation of the eye and the structure of it and don't making it flat, doing the doing the um don't make it flat and like I can still see how it is 3D, like how the volume of it, like I can see it. That's really good job. Okay, and for last one, we got God Slayer. And I am gonna put this here so I can use the photo. No pen, no. Sorry, my kitty cat is like, is being a bad boy. Here, hold on, let me distract him. Pen, no. Oh, I just realized you guys can see him in the camera. <laughs> oh God, he wants to get on my oil paint and stuff and put hair and everything. Um, Actually, it's my brushes, that's more like it. So, God Slayer, I read your note. His plan has, has failed. Yes, Dustin, they have failed. Sometimes I wake up in the mornings and all the brushes and everything's on the floor. Like he does it while I'm away. It's so bad. All right, God Slayer, I saw your notes and what you were saying. So you're saying you were having a little bit of a hard time with this. Um, you're saying you say, you say that you were having a little bit of a hard time uh, smoothing it out. Is that correctly? That making the like transitioning or understanding it. Is that correct? Okay. So the transition is basically null in mind. Do you mean like going from like a mapping to like rendering smooth? Is that what you mean? Gotcha. Okay. Well, there is a cheating way, well, cheating um, way that, or e uh, easy way, I don't know if it will, it will um, help, which is one, 
is right here on, oh, I just realized that it doesn't show my entire screen. So I'm going to have to move Photoshop out of the way. So here, here we go. So here you have the notch tool, this, this much tool. So you got this much tool. And a way that sometimes I do it, you can do it really quick, is if you grab this, mu this much tool, and when you grab this much tool, grab one of the brushes that looks kind of like this. That when, you, that when you open it, it looks kind of like that shape. And I usually like to put it like a little bit diagonally about that. And I put it, and then you put this strength, I usually put it like around 20%. And just move it out. That's one way to do it. That's like a basic, fast way to do it. It doesn't always work, but that will be an easy way to do it. Or like here, let me, let me take away all your, all your quick little lines here. So you can see the result. So that will be with the smooch tool. That's kind of like how you could start. Or if you make, so right now I have it at 20, but if you make it like around 50, then it's much more. So you have to be careful when you do it. So I'm which, so I would recommend to us like which direction you have to be careful in which direction you push it. Yeah. At first you did and you didn't like it. Okay. Then the other option is the good old way of, you know, brought like, um, literally painting it like, uh, take like 20% and I drop and paint over and then I drop and paint over and I drop and paint over and I drop, paint over, I drop. You know what I mean? Like start blending and blending and blending. Just keep eye dropping from each of the other two sides, like around your brush, around 20, 30% and keep eye dropping from each side. That's another way. Um, another way to do it too is like select it, blur it, and then come back and tidy up the details. But it's already there softed. Um, does does that uh, does that one does that help the at all? Maybe um, here will help too. So like I don't know, brush thirty percent, then you eye drop here and go over. I drop here and go over. I drop there and go over. I drop here and go over. Same thing. I drop here, go over. I drop there, go over. I drop in the other side, go over the other side, go over. And it's like ping pong. It's like playing tennis. Like yeah, it's like you just literally play tennis, ping pong from each side. And then you start like getting these gradients. And then slowly you start getting it. That's like very basic, but that's like a, a way to get around it, to start meshing it, to start like getting away from the blocking it, blocking, blocky, blocking it, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So let's get to your notes for the, the lighting. So let's see. I thought you did a pretty good job to nail it down. The light comes from there. Um, I will say to pick your cores, the excited pick a little bit of the core more I think you yeah, you have like the general shadow area but I would like to see a little bit more where the core the core shadows are mm. 
yeah, where like the decor is. I will say. Um, you, and then with the highlights to follow more the anatomy a little bit more, like little, like general, like a. Yeah, follow with the highlights, follow a little bit uh, the anatomy more. I like how you did it on the face, like how you broke it down here. You got this one pretty good. Um, let me see. This looks cool. Once again, I really like how I really like how um, you get all your animals and everything looks very like structure and very like solid and geometric and everything always looks like a sculpture. It looks very like solid and geometric. Um, Keep, yeah, keep practicing, like, breaking down things, to analyze things on shading. I will recommend for you to keep doing, to do this assignment again with one of the other photos or any other photo you want. Definitely, I think you will benefit of keep doing this again. Um, and also, uh, I remember I told you last class about trying to start working on gesture drawing. And I will go over that in one of the future classes. Definitely this will be one of those moments that gesture drawing definitely will help you since this looks um stiff it will it will definitely help you more on those arms going back um and that that gesture right there or like this entire line going down But I will pick one out. I pick, uh, yeah, pick another of the images and do this again. And if you post it on the if you post it on the chat, I'll I'll do a screenshot review there. I've been meaning to the one and the other person from last week, but I'll post a I'll post another review of it. But yeah, yeah, good job. I really like how you did the general how you did the, you got down the general lighting. I'm sorry, the general shadow. You blocked down pretty good the general shadow. I liked how you saw that this is the darkest area and you kept that the darkest area you did like you you saw that that's good job and i like that you saw this as the hot highlights and you kept those there in the hot highlights and even this little line here i like that too that looks pretty and this nice i like those too and i really like this ear yeah, you did a good job with the ears. The ears are so cute. That little adorable. I always like your brush strokes too. They're pretty cool. Yeah, I'm a check to see. If you want to take another crack on the other ones, go for it. I think we should do this assignment again for next week. So, for today, I am going to be rendering... This! <laughs> I fell in love with this so much last week. And I really, really, really wanted to render it so badly. And this is uh, from people that weren't here last week. This is um, Anna Thay's submission from last week's homework. And I asked her if I could paint it, and she said yes. And um, I will maybe turn it, I will try to make it into an oil painting. But for now, I'm just going to make it into a digital painting for the time being. And um, I will try and show you guys uh, the goal. I only know we only have like 20 minutes left. But in these 20 minutes, I will kind of show you the goal is to show you how I use the reference photo and how I study values, how I will study the values and how I'll digital painting, how I look, how, to anal how I analyze the photo and how I translate the um sorry about that how i translate the um values of it kind of like how we did the homework and how that translates to digital like a, to a to a painting or to your own work and uh so i'm going to be painting this and just speaking out loud my process and if you guys have any questions just pop them in the chat and i'll try to answer them so hopefully that will that will work. That will help you guys out. So, so first of all, I 
make these little guys a little bit bigger. Um, about that. And then I'd, I'll make it like that. And I just push my values a little bit more just so I can really see what's going on. Um, I usually make like a second copy where, I, like I say, I usually make a second copy where I exaggerate, where I, exa I really exaggerate the values. And I just have it on hand. Like I just have it on hand that I turn it on and turn it off. And I check it with my stuff. And then let me take hers and wanna, there we go. Cute. Okie dokie. I just made a layer on multiply, put it on top, uh, with the layer, uh, put it on multiply, put it on top so I only see the outline. And now I'm going to grab my favorite brush. Uh, usually my favorite brush is this little guy. And uh, I'm going to call it Paint Over. Okay. So the way I usually paint is the way I approach it is the same way I approach oils. Like the way I paint digitally is usually the same way I approach oils, uh, which is I always start from dark to light. I always put in my darkest darks. I always put in my darkest darks and I go towards the light. And in this case, let me see. Okay. So the darkest darks is the, when I squint, I will say the darkest dark when I squint is the eyes, which they're already dark, is here. I will say it's this little guy here, the ears. And about there, the little ears. So first I just like block it in. I don't even worry about the details. And at the beginning, I'm just like squinting. I'm usually painting like around 30 or 40% opacity. About there. There, this guy here. About that then we have this big shadow around the snout then this part that's super dark is the nose for sure that's like the darkest part actually then the ears have this cute little part, um, um, branding, marking, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> and then this is pretty dark underneath here. And then at this point, I usually turn it like around 1%. I mean, around 10%. Um, around 10% uh, opacity and I like to go far away and just like nail down like the general 
the general gradient or like the general value. So like I know this is dark or like even 20%, like I know that's dark there. I know this is dark here. There's like, oh, my flow is really strong. I know it's up there. I know this entire side of the face is like on shadow. Yeah, I will say that like, I just make it very small and then you're trying to get like the general shadows and lighting. Then I know this is in dark here. This is pretty dark here. And this is a little darker there. There's like a little mark here, kind of like a little bit dark there. We got something going on about there. Then it gets dark down there again. And then it seems pretty dark down there. Then we can pull out some of the lighting later. And since this is imagination, we just can make it whatever we want. We can see that the lighting is coming from this direction. So according to the rest of the information we have, we can assume that this side is in dark and the other side is in light. I will say something like that. I, was, I think it's still a little bit darker here. Yeah. So that's pretty good for me right now. Oh, I forgot the horn. So when we were talking about the Terminators before, I see, so we pop this guy that I made high contrast for me to check my own drawing to see if it matches. So I already know that this was much darker here that I thought. This area is more darker that I, I analyzed before. I didn't see it was that dark before, but when I made, I checked with my high contrast image, I was like, oh, this is much darker that I saw before. So then I know to go back on mine and make this guy much darker. Now I know that that's much darker. Then I also realized that this was also much darker than I thought. So I'm going to go back and make mine much darker too. Oh, darn it. I painted right on top of my reference. Oh, well, it's okay. So I will say, I will say I will go back and trying to make this guy a little bit darker, more, a little bit more darker too. And that's pretty good for now. This seems a little bit darker too, this area. Yeah, that seems pretty good right now for that. that. So now let's try with on the cat now. Even that this kitty cat has these, the kitty cat has the, uh, the black and white markings. I'm just going to make it a white cat. So where is the darkest dark of the cat? That's going to be tricky because he's, he's black. <laughs> so I'm just going to assume that based on my experience is um, gonna be around the eyes, this little thing here. You know what, just for the experience, just for the tutorial, I'm just gonna keep it as a little black and white kitty, it's okay. So when I squint, where's the darkest dark in this kitty is definitely around here. And then all of this is dark. 
but when I squint, when I squint, it's like he has like this shadow here. This is still much, much darker because when I compare it, when I compare the value of this with the value of that, this is darker than this in general. So I got to make sure that this is much darker. And this entire side of the kitty cat, even that his entire face is dark because he has the markings. This size is really dark. And when I compare values again, this black right here is darker than that. And before when I painted deer, this was my blackest black. So it's going to make sure that this is darker than that. So I've got to start comparing my values uh, with each other. That's why sometimes, again, like when I'm doing oil painting, the first thing I put is like, oh, who is my darkest black in here in my painting? When I look at it is this tail, this, this, and maybe this eye, little eyelash. And I use that as like a point of reference and I move backwards towards the light. Yeah. And then I will say this is all in shadow. This is all in shadow. In shadow there. And again, I don't want to get too distracted with the little details for later, the little details of the fur and the markings and all of that. I just want to get like the general lighting first and then I can come back and like add all those little details, you know. Um. I know we only have like five more minutes before I have to talk about the assignment. And then I can just start bringing in lighting now. And that's when I start pulling out then. I go in with like lot white with like around 2%. And then I just start squinting and start pulling it out. I know that's light there. I know we got a little bit of bounce light that we saw here. It's a little bit of bounce there, a little bit of bounce there, a little bounce there, a little bounce here, a little bit there, a little bit there. We get a little bit of bounce here. We got a little bit of light in there. We have some here, we, have, we can have a little bit bounce there since I'm gonna clean the outside after. We have something going on here. We have some light in there. I haven't even worried about the little wings yet. I forgot those little wings were there. We have a little bit of a highlight here, bounce light from the deer. We have bounce light from underneath the little chin. This is, white is too bright. I'm gonna go bright, bright, white was too bright, so I'm gonna go more for like a little light gray. It's messing up. Remember when I was talking about before that your bounce light should never be as bright as your highlights or halftones? So I'm gonna go 
that's better. So we got a little bit of our bounce light here, got a little bit of there. We even have a little bit there. His stupid little chin that is so cute, I can't stand it. We have that little ear there. We have, I know we have the deer mouth and just sort of like start sculpting it, you know, start pulling in the lights. You have that rim and that reflective light. What is it, Pan? We have that light coming in here. Then we have that other little bounce light here. We have the one bounce here. We have that bounce light from the bottom line lid. We have that little bounce light here, but it's not so, I made it too bright. Pan, I am busy. I don't know if you guys can hear my cat meowing at me. <laughs> we have a little bit here, one more bounce light. And we can start pulling in some of the whites that are brighter. And see a little bit of a rim here happening. And we have the little highlight of the nose. We have a little detail here too of the nose. And it will bounce underneath the nose and the highlight of the wet nose. Maybe I should zoom in more. Sorry, I was so zoomed out. I was trying to make sure you guys see both images. And there's also like a little bouncy light here. There's a little harder terminator or core, I will say. Can you please behave? And in general, this is pretty bright. It also just helps me when I paint smaller in these stages. That's why I had it so summed out. It just helps me like really see it, you know? And this is really bright. But this one is not so bright. Like this, like if you see it, this one is much brighter than this one because that one's still in the shadow. So it's gotta make sure it's not as bright. And then we got the little nose light. And then some highlight there from the cat. And we got the little whiskers. Yeah. Okay. So I hope, so I just pulled out and mine is definitely a little bit more high contrast than this one. So I'll just, so I just speak something lighter. I speak like a mid tone and make it like, op, like, uh, make it a little, um, opaque or transparent. And just, I just like go all over it to try and make it more high key. because mine was a little too, mine was too high contrast. And I just try not to clean it. And that's usually how I do like value studies. And that's how I make an underpainting in oils, but with sepia, with a sepia or raw umber Ah, uh, been lurking the server. Oh, but oh, hi, welcome. So yeah, so this is um to wrap it up. So this is how I study the reference, and I study the values, and like I said, this is how I work from dark to light. Um and pull out, pull out the darks and I mean, pull out, I'm sorry, from dark to light and then I pull out the light. And then once I get like this general lighting down, um, it, I do it both digitally like this and I also do it in oils like that. Then 
I, I make sure that I get my values right, then I work on the details. But until this part is not correctly, then I don't move on to details. Like all the values got to be correctly, the shadows got to be correctly. Um, and this is how I use a reference to make my own work. And um, I hope this helps. I hope it's that I hope this makes sense now that we've been learning how to use lighting from last class, how it's applied um, when you do your own work. Um, when we're talking about, you know, like the bounce lighting, the core and things like that. So for the assignment for next class, I was going to say, go back to the assignment, which I can repost it, but it's pinned. Well, we're going to go back to the assignment from, I think it's two weeks ago, I'll repost it just in case, that we had uh, this thing, the animals, there were two animals together. And I want you guys to do this. You can do it both traditionally, or you can do it digital either way. And it's for you guys to analyze the values. Go, um, analyze the values and do the, the goal is for you to be able to interpret and figure out the shading and the lighting. Um, uh, figure out the lighting of uh, your reference images. And it's the reference images of the, uh, the, uh, the ones that were animals being friends. But I can repost them, not a problem. And, the, and um, the assignment goal is for you guys to do what I did today. To understand and interpret the reference and get your values down. And... Um, yeah, and be and starting to understand lighting when we when we learned last week and today. If you guys have any questions, let me know. We have about two minutes left, and I'll take any questions now. And if not, then I'll see you all next week. Is Pampin still here, being bad? No, he's gone. <laughs> and also thanks to um, Anna Hay for this cute little uh, drawing from a couple of weeks ago, from last week that it's adorable. I see people typing, so I'm just like waiting. <laughs> We will plug him another image. Sounds good, Ghost Slayer. Whatever you, whatever you want to do. If you want to tackle this one first and do the other one, that works too. Whatever makes you happy. Either one works. I just realized that my picture up in Discord is inverted. Hey Dustin, is my is my camera inverted on Discord? I see it inverted on Discord. I don't hear you, Pete. Hold on, Pete. I don't hear you. Something's going on with the uh, settings. One second. I know. Not again. Let me see. I can see my icon. I can hear you now, Pete. I can hear you now, Pete. You there you go. Hi. Yeah, you are on the, your camera's on the right side of the screen and you are on the right side of the camera. Okay, cool. Yeah, mine looks inverted for some reason on this card. So strange. Um, when you see, whenever the computer shows you you're on webcam, it tries to reverse things. Because mm. people are more used to seeing themselves reversed in the mirror than they mm. are like double reversed in a camera. 
And so in order to be less confusing, when you raise your left hand, it shows up on the left side of the screen. Oh, I see. Gotcha. And so, because otherwise people have a confused, get confused about, do they need to move left to get out of the left side of the screen? Okay. The left side of the screen. That makes so sense. They leave the left and then they, they disappear to the right. Gotcha, and gotcha. So <laughs> it, it inverts people to themselves only. Okay, I to see. Make it less Gotcha. I make sense. All righty. Colin was saying that you had the peat filter on. So <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. That's awesome. Big class. All righty, guys. Well, I'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye.